So today we're going to be learning about layering watercolor onto our Cosmo flower. Um, so I already have this drawn onto my watercolor paper and then I put the masking fluid onto the watercolor paper. You want to make sure when you put your masking fluid onto the paper that you don't do it like one big sticker. Of course that's kind of just preference. Sometimes you can still do that but I like to do it kind of like in the same texture as on the picture just because if you have a little bit of the color of your petals that goes through onto this part then it's perfectly fine so adds a little more interest to your picture um, so I've given everyone or if you already had a pink on your palette you can just use that but I gave everybody um, some quinacridone rose which is a really nice pink color just because the cosmos flower is really nice and pink um, so I'm gonna use that or mainly use that only color for all of the petals and then eventually we'll probably add a little blue to have some you know purpler, is that a word? <laughs> More purple uh, petals on there. So I'm gonna make a nice puddle where I'm gonna take a little bit of water and a little bit of pink from my well. Um, so this, since this is fresh paint, I really only need to take a very small amount and water it down a lot. Like this. So, and then I'm using a, a round brush. This one is like a size eight. So it's a pretty nice round brush because it has a bit of a point, but it's not like too pointy. Some brushes, if you use them and they're too pointy, you can end up with too much line on your picture. But I think we're all good on those type of brushes. Um, so what we're gonna be doing first is we're gonna be painting our petals and just like we're going to do a first layer first and we're going to paint a petal skip a petal paint a petal skip a petal so if you accidentally paint two next to each other it's okay they may bleed together a little bit but normally we can save it um, and what you want to think about is when we're painting these petals we want to try and paint them in the direction that the petals are curving so like this one i'm going to paint it you know this direction almost as if you were literally painting on top of the flower that one that direction so and we're going to use the wet on wet method where i'm going to take a little bit of water and i'm going to start with this petal right here and i'm going to paint i know you can't really see it but i'm going to paint the petal with water and pull it towards the center and I'm gonna do, now I'm gonna grab pink, and I'm gonna do pink and go towards the center, like that. And the reason why I'm going towards the center is because a lot of times with watercolor, wherever you stop, the color is going to puddle. And since the middle of our flower is kind of darker, that kind of works in our favor. So and if it doesn't reach all the way down, you could always drag the pink a little bit farther. And if it's not dark enough, we'll go back and do another layer on there. Okay, so we'll do that one petal at a time and kind of skip around. Oh, are we supposed to draw the lines in it? Uh, no, you don't have to. You can just paint the lines. <laughs> so I'm going to do water and drag the pink. Oops. And it's nice to kind of leave a little bit of space in between the dark lines because then you almost have like the little ruffles. So once your first layer is dry, or even if you're still waiting for it to dry, you can kind of practice on a separate piece of paper to the side. Um, but once my first layer is dry, what I can do is like if all of my petals were really, really light, like way too light, I could just do a whole coat the same way and go around and skip. Or if I have a layer that I'm fairly happy with as like 
my lightest values, like as long as I have like my first layer has some of this color to it, then that's good. The next thing you want to do is start looking for what petals are darker than others or like areas of the petals that are going to be a little darker. Like this petal is behind this one. So I'm going to go ahead and do another layer on this petal just so I can make it look like it's going behind that one because things that are lighter are going to come towards you versus things that are darker then they look like oh they're behind the petal so I'm going to take that same color just with a little less water and instead of wetting the whole petal first a lot of times what you can do is you can actually put in your color where you want it to be a little bit darker. Then take water, and I just have clean water on my paintbrush, and I can pull the color out a little bit so then it looks like it's fading into the petal a little bit. <laughs> like that, and then it just gets a little bit darker. So, and if it gets a little crazy, a little out of hand, you can always take a flat brush and try and lift a little bit of that color up again. That's also kind of a good technique if your petals are really, really dark. Um, or the other way is you could just do another layer with that same technique we were already doing, where you wet the petal and then you go in and start darkening. It's too dark. I can take a brush and kind of lift. So in some little areas, I can come in and just darken like the center, like that, and then fade it with a little water. And a lot of times, so if I have a really hard edge and I'm trying to water it down, I can just rotate my brush if I want it really smooth. But if I'm going for the liney effect, that's when I drag with the water up. So most of the time we scumble, you know, kind of like rotate it, but for this one we're trying to go with the flower. So you're taking your water, starting at the top and pulling it down, because we want this part of the petal to stay really light. And then the same, even when you're doing another layer, if you're doing a whole layer, I go from the very tip of the petal down, like that. And that's with it, the petal being wet? Mm -hmm. Just slightly wet though. <laughs> that is the key. Just like, what I like to do. <laughs> it's okay. I like to bathe my paper. <laughs> Now 
So, and then eventually we'll take our pink and add a little bit of ultramarine blue to it to make it kind of purple. Um, but if yours is really wet, I would probably wait for a while to do that step. But that's going to be like our very, very darkest layer. So one of the things you can do while your petals are drying, like if the bottom petals aren't like super, super wet, um, a lot of times for stems what I'll do is a very light coat of yellow first just to make them really vibrant. So if you're waiting for your petals to dry, you could just take a really watered down yellow and just paint in your stem, if you have a stem. <laughs> All right, so once your petals are fairly dry, at least around the center, then you can take off your masking fluid. Um, so to take off the masking fluid, I would use a rubber cement eraser, uh, which is great. You sometimes can use like a regular eraser, but I find that the rubber cement erasers work the best. And whenever you take it off, you can just use kind of like the corner. And again, you want to make sure it's dry, because if I start doing this into a wet part of my painting, it's going to smudge everything. I'm just going back and forth. <laughs> so, and then it's just going to leave this nice little white blob on there. <laughs> and then the first thing you want to do is take kind of like a lemony yellow, because it's one of our brightest yellows. And I can tap like this to fill it, because you don't want it to be super flat, so that's why I'm tapping it wet onto dry, like that. And then while it's wet, you could take yellow and burnt sienna and add a little bit of darker yellow on the very edge. So, and this is just a really quick kind of like wet step and then I can add more layers onto it once it's more dry, but this is gonna be the first thing I do once I take off the masking fluid. So, and to add some more depth to your flower, once your center is dry, um, I can go even darker and take my pink and add more ultramarine blue to it to the point that it's really, really dark blue and I want very, very little water. So it's very rich and saturated. Do, 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 do. Like that. And this actually will also help me to kind of edit my center. Like maybe my center got a little too big or it's too perfectly round. So I can use this really dark purple to go around my center. And then I'm gonna fade it with a little bit of water. Okay, Yes. Yeah. And you don't want to do it like everywhere. You really want to do it in like a few little spots. Right up next to the center. And then I'm kind of pulling the purple out with water. Or sometimes I can just tap right next to it.
So, and then what I would do for your stem is you can make a really nice green just by using sap green. And sometimes the sap green is really brown, so I'll add a little bit of ultramarine blue to it to make it just a little bit more blue. Or if you want a brighter green, then you would add like your lemon yellow. And since I already have some yellow on my stem, then I could basically just come in and fill the whole entire stem, except for like one little side where I want it to be a little bit lighter. And then take more green to make it a little bit darker where it goes right underneath my flower. So then you have a little bit of a shadow. And you can do that wet onto wet just as long as you don't use too much paint because it is a really small area or you can always wait for it to dry. So, and then once your petals are dry, if you want to do like water drops on them, really all you need is you can use like white acrylic paint or sometimes like a white paint pen, um, white gouache. And then a lot of times I'll use a pencil to draw where I want my um, drops to go. And you want to make sure it's on an area that's not too dark or too light because then it's a little tricky to get the drop to look 3D. So kind of an in-between area. And I'm just going to lightly draw a circle. Key is lightly. <laughs> so, and then basically the anatomy of a water drop is kind of like a sphere where you want to have like a shadow underneath your drop, a little shadow in the drop, and then highlights. So what I'm going to do is take the same color that's on my petal. So if you were doing an orange flower, orange, you know, if I have a purple area, probably add a little purple to your color. And first thing I want to do is you're almost like underlining the drop to do the shadow. And then I'll take a little water and fade it. like that. And then inside the drop, so this part I was going under the drop, and then this part I'm going to go inside, but the opposite. So kind of like smiley face and then frowny face. <laughs> and I'm going to fade that with a little bit of water. So, whoops, a little more water. And a really important part about the drop is having a dark enough shadow under the drop and having enough of like your petal color showing through because you want your water drops to be transparent. And then I'm going to water down some acrylic, put it at the bottom of the drop like that. And then the last little thing I'll do is take acrylic again, or whatever white you're using, and I'm gonna do a little drop, boop, on the drop. And then you have a water drop. So, and one of the last things I would do on your watercolor painting is the background. So for the background, a lot of times you can look at your reference picture and see what kind of colors are behind your flower. Um, and I could do like a full background with greens um, and I'm also going to use some salting or you know so you don't have to always paint a background. I'll a lot of times do a background if I feel like I want my subject to pop a lot more. Maybe it's a really light subject and then a dark background really helps it to pop. Um, you could also just like flick little bits of color around your flower. But I also really like backgrounds because like some of these edges on my petals are really just pencil line and I really want them to have like a really crisp defined line made with watercolor instead. So that could just be maybe I need to come back in and do more layers on the edges of my watercolor or the other option is a background. So for my background I'm going to be using uh, margarita salt which is kind of a nice like thick coarse salt. It's really great. You can find it for only like a dollar at the grocery store and it gives you really fun texture for backgrounds. 
And then I'm also going to use some sap green and probably some viridian green and yellow. So, and before you even start doing backgrounds, you want to make sure that you have nice big puddles of whatever colors you're going to use because you don't want to have to be scrambling for a new color. So I'm going to make nice big puddles. And this is a lot of times why people, why people will spray their whole entire palette because then you don't have to grab for the paint as much. So that's a lot of sap green. And let's see, I don't think I have Viridian green on this palette, so I'm just gonna grab some blue and add that in every so often. So, and then what I wanna do is really have my background really nice and dark right near my flower and then slowly fade out. And uh, most of the time with your backgrounds, you don't want to try and take on too much too fast. You don't want to try and paint everything at the same time. A lot of times you want to kind of split it into sections. So I'm going to take some clean water and I'm just going to spread it a little larger than I'm going to paint. And especially if you notice you have a really big puddle of water when you do this, it's good to try and spread it out so you don't have water just collected in one area. So, and then I'm going to take my green. And I'm going to go from, see you can already see it's very wet over there, from the very edge of my petal. And you're not really outlining the petal, you're kind of going around it and then pulling that color away. Because if I do like an outline and then do it, sometimes the outline will dry before I have a chance to get to that part. So I'm using the very tip of my brush. And sometimes it helps even to paint in little crinkles in your flower that maybe you didn't have in the beginning. And when I'm adding in color, I'm trying to be very gentle. So not like poking the paper too much. And another fun color you can use for darks is a lot of times purple. So like maybe I don't want my stem to necessarily disappear completely. I could use purple right next to my uh, green and it still gets really nice and dark. And then while that's wet, I'm gonna take a little bit of salt and you just wanna sprinkle a little bit into your background. It doesn't take very much and you're not gonna see an immediate change. It's gonna take a moment. So it's kinda of one of the things you kinda of have to believe it's gonna happen. <laughs> so, and then I don't wanna leave this dry edge over here that's where I want to make sure I've wet the edges where I stopped. And you know, if you accidentally leave it and it does dry as a hard edge, the salt kind of hides that. You don't have to do greens for your background. You could do blues, as long as it's a darker value or a lighter value than your flower. Because what I mean by value is like, if my, pet, my petals are very, very dark, I wouldn't really want to do a dark background because it's going to compete with those colors. I want to choose something that's going to help to make my flower the main focal point and like the most important part of my picture. Take a little salt while that's wet. And 
feel free to you know move to a smaller brush if you're struggling to go in between the petals you don't have to try and use the same brush the whole entire time so and that's basically how I would do your background section by section you can use a little salt for fun and yeah just have fun with your flower